Krista Gocioli. I'm a body-oriented systems therapist. I'm working this, uh, in the psychotherapy in an outpatient uh, clinic, and I'm also working as in a private practice. A lot of times it's actually people that really feel um, distance from their body, that they've had things in their lives, in their um, biographies that have made them feel really unsafe in their body. I've been in Europe for 25 years, and I'm originally from New York State, upstate New York, and lived in New York before I happened to come to Berlin just for a couple of days. I wanted to be here for a couple of days, and it sort of turned into now more than half of my life. I was um, a co-founder of an organization in Bosnia during the war. They had a house on the front line that they wanted to convert into a, a meeting center for all different ethnic groups for youth. And they were looking for people in the arts therapy field, so creative arts therapy, and I'm a movement therapist and with a trauma uh, concentration. It wasn't post-traumatic stress that they were dealing with, they were in it. I mean, that we were dealing with people that were just trying to survive. It was a great experience to see how effective being in the body, even when there's a, a, a threat that's actual, like right now a threat, how accessible it can be. And how moving together with people. I think if I had worked with these women individually, it would have been an absolutely different healing process as if I worked in a group. I was 13 when I met a dance therapist at a movement fair. It was, I don't know, they had Broadway dancing. Like you could kind of experiment in different workshops of what the world of dance could be. This was a job fair or something. And I went there because this famous Broadway dancer was going to be there, and I knew I was going to be a Broadway dancer. And I went in, and the, the class was really exciting, but I met a dance therapist, and she explained her work. And I knew right then and there, I said, that's what I'm doing. So I got here in 94, and like I said, I was only going to stay a couple of days. And in those couple of days that I stayed, I met people mm, that were in the squatted housing scene. And it wasn't the squatted housing punk scene, but people that looked at houses and said, look, at, we can have, we can re create a new structure of living and a new structure of organization. And there was a couple of people that were, had the vision of um, changing this old factory uh, into a dance studio. And then we were a group of people that said, hey, let's have this studio and just have like a lab to create new ways of connecting together. I think we did everything from uh, meditation, contact improv was a big uh, part of the work, creating new dance projects and people coming through town will check out K77. And it was uh, strongly connected with the house, and now it's um, separate. We um, also had the opportunity, just by chance, to find out about a former APG uh, in, outside of Berlin, in Brandenburg, in Stolzenhagen. The Good Stolzenhagen is a Genossenschaft, which is a legal uh, system, body, and we're now, I think, 42 adults. And at my last count, we were something like 38 kids. And uh, there's different uh, organizations on the Good Schrotzenhang. And one of them is Ponderosa, which is a dance festival. And that I was also one of the founding members of, of this thing. We stood in the old cow barn looking, <laughs> looking at big holes in the roof and the floor and lots of hay and decided to make a dance studio out of it. And I'm not involved in the organization anymore, and, but they have, I think, at last count, what is it, five different dance studios. So starting 20 years ago with this one. And there's another organization that, uh, it's, uh, that I'm involved with, also the founding member of called the Schmiede Stolzenhagen. And this is an organization that we've uh, created to have, we call it study circles. And so people from the village or from the city can come and offer workshops about their expertise in something. And we have anything from herbal uh, cooking, from the herbs from around there, to shiatsu, to movement practices. I offer my workshops there on body awareness, um, 
trauma-informed somatics, uh, lots of different offerings. The Embodiment Circle was formed out of the Embodiment Conference, and Berlin was one of the first cities, or was the first city, that we said, well, why don't we watch the Embodiment Conference together live and then talk about what we've learned. And we've created um, uh, Embodiment Circles in 27 different countries. I think there's 54 embodiment circles, and these are uh, self-organized groups that have shared learning, so peer-to-peer -peer learning, and different topics on embodiment. I really enjoy big projects. I enjoy um, holding space for lots of people. I can I do that well. I enjoy it. I um, feel very comfortable in that space. Yet I've learned in the last few years, and you maybe can call it age or wisdom, that I need as much, if not a bit more, of the time that I'm out there, I need just as much time alone. To be in community for me means also to have my space.